Hello again, lovely people. Today I thought we would talk about the Teensy 4.0. I have all the wiring done, all the components connected, everything working great, a few libraries updated, a little bit of code updated, a little bit of code added. Uh, I will go over the code in another video. In today's video, I wanted to share with you the wiring diagram and the changes that were made. So let's dive right into that. Okay, so let me go over the quote-unquote schematic really quick for you, the changes. So I can flip back and forth here between the mega circuit, which whoever's building this is familiar with, and the changes that have taken place to replace the mega with the teensy. So you can see it's really just in this area here where the actual microcontroller is replaced. And yes, we have the three additional new PIR sensors here. Okay, so I'll keep that mega circuit up on screen if we need to refer to it, but I don't think we will. All right, so here's the new code. Oh, sorry, the new wiring for the new setup. The code There is code changes too, which I'll go over in another video. So first is our I squared C bus system. Okay, as explained in previous video, and those of you familiar with Teensy's, we have multiple I squared C buses available. So... Um, it has three, the Teensy 4.0. The third one is very small pads that you have to solder to, and you know a lot of people use additional boards or little jigs to do it or um, special pins. And I, I wanted no part of that, so I figured I would first try to put a couple of devices on one of the bus and, and see if it worked, and it did. So I am only using two of the three buses. Okay, and we can see that represented by the blue and the purple lines here, the wires. Purple is SCL lines, and blue are SDA lines. Okay, so actually let me first, again, use in Tinkercad. They obviously have no symbol for a teensy, so I basically just used a bunch of pin headers. And even in that case, they only have an 8-pin header available. So there are extra pins here, so I put the label over it to avoid confusion there. But I think this is a pretty good representation. If we show this, I think I can go full screen here. Yeah. So if I show you this, this is the orientation. Sorry. Shoot. That's the orientation on the screen, on the wire diagram. So you can see it goes from ground, top right, to pin 12. And then on the bottom right, it goes from VIN to pin 13. Okay. And then... A couple of these pins here we also use, the on-off pin and then the ground pin. Okay, so if we go back to our diagram here, you can see here, here's the ground in. Let me zoom in on this. So the labels spread out a bit. <clears throat> so here's our ground pin and our on-off pin, which go to a push-button switch. Now, the Teensy does not have a reset button, which the Mega Circuit did. So this is one of the changes. So the mega circuit has an actual reset pin, so all you have to do is ground that out to reset the device. Teensy does not have that, but they do provide an on-off pin, which is essentially the same. We ground this on-off line, or this on-off pin to ground, and that turns it off. Now, by default, um, if you just wire this up, hardware only, no software, you have to actually hold that button for almost five seconds. I think it's four and a half seconds before the Teensy will shut down, and then hold it for, I think, a half a second to turn it back on. I did find a cool little piece of software, a little library that somebody wrote, so you can actually catch that, um, I guess, interrupt, and, and do something first. So now I've coded it using that class that when you press the button, you'll get you know sound and, and flashing light to let you know you're shutting down and then it shuts down so that's pretty cool i, li I like that um solution other than just using the hardware version all right so then on to these pins so here we are again the top side as i showed in the card here the orientation the usb plug would be here i guess i should put a little note there i will so here we have on the top we have ground running to pin uh what did i say pin 12, but we're only using up to 10. And on the bottom, it goes from VIN to pin 13. Again, we stop at 15. 
Now, as with Arduino devices, pin 13 is tied to the LED on the device, so I am using that, like in the startup shutdown procedure, like I said, that's the LED that I flash. Um, <clears throat> but it's a nice to have because it's a really bright LED too. Okay, so let's go over the wiring. So the major change was because the TMC is a 3.3 volt device, I first had concern that it was going to take major rewiring just for power, but lo and behold, it, it can accept on its VIN pin up to 5.6 volts, 5.5 volts to power it, but it can't provide 5 volts. So the way we had the mega wired up was we went straight from the 6.8 to 5 volt buck converter to the mega to power that, and then we pulled the 5 volt from the mega to our power distribution block. Okay, luckily the only change I had to make was I now run the buck converter over here on the bottom left straight to the ground block to provide everything with its 5 volts, 5.4 I think I have it set for. And then the Titsi also is plugged into that block to get its power from. So it's not providing power to all the other devices, it's taking its power, sharing it with all the others. So it worked out great. Um, I don't have any 3.3 only devices, components, all of the sensors take five, so we're good to go. I mean, even if we do end up adding devices that take 3.3, we'll be able to take it straight off the Teensy and not need another terminal block. Okay, so that was the first change. But converter now goes straight to the terminal block, and then the terminal block feeds the main ground and the main VIN pin on Tinsy. Okay? And then I don't think I'm going to bother going through all of these. They're really just pin changes. Same exact wiring as the Mega. I just obviously had to select different pins depending on the configuration of the Tinsy. Um, I guess real quick, the voltage divider battery check goes to A1, which is pin 15. And then here are our, our first two IC, I squared C buses. I don't know why I always get that backwards. Uh, this first one, since I'm reading left to right, is, is the second channel. So the second channel feeds, if I zoom out, the MPU and then the nano circuit are connected to that bus. And then the I squared C bus one is connected to only the PWM motor controller. So that's on its own bus. So we have zero interruptions in our code. It's so great. Okay. And then another change that I made is rather than the annoying little Piazzo speaker, I actually had a speaker module. Uh, I can't really show you because it's actually wired into things right now, but maybe you could see that. Probably not. It's just a cool little speaker about maybe the size of a little bigger than a quarter, but it also has a volume control on it, which is pretty cool, even though it's a screw adjustable pot. So I may wire a potentiometer out onto Nova so you can actually control her volume too. But anyway, that's one change I made. And the only difference there is rather than the, whereas the piezo just took a, the power lines, this now has a data line. So that's been added. <clears throat> okay. And then yes, we have power coming in over here, the VIN side. Then on the opposite side, we have ground coming in on the ground. And then here is our OEM switch for the PWM controller. And I think that actually is the only one that where the pin number didn't change. That's still pin number three. And then the added PIR sensors are four, five, and six for front, left, and right. And then the PS2 remote for the next four pins. Now that was a little tricky, so you'll see in my code video that we have a couple of new libraries for, to support the Teensy. The MPU has a brand new library. It actually works much better than the code we were using for the Mega as well. I still need to tweak and refine it a little bit. Otherwise, yes, it's really cool. The PS2, I panicked because yeah, it was not working and nobody had any clue and I managed to find some a little alteration of the existing library for it for a Tinsy 3.2. So I crossed my fingers and hoped to die, as they say, and it didn't work. So I panicked a little more, but I dug into the library and played around with the debugging a little bit, and I got it to work. So now we're running the PS2 on Tinsy 4, which I think is a first. At least I couldn't find it Googled anywhere. Um, so I think that's about it, guys. So not really ma major changes. Um, 
When it comes to coding and programming the Tin C, yes, there's a couple little caveats that I want to share with you, but we'll do that in another video. So it's looking good. Okay, guys. So I think in my next video, I will go over the code changes and updates regarding the Tin C upgrade to Nova. And then I will venture into cleaning up this mess. You can see here I've got some new wiring that I'm going to try and make some good harnesses for. And I have some shielded cables for the important data lines. And yeah, next time you see this mess, it should be nice and clean. I'm probably going to keep it wired like this and just clean it up and, and do my best to get the proper lengths and such for Nova, even though she's up there. <laughs> but I, I, I want to try and keep it on the board for a little while, because not only for testing further, but I am honestly dying to create a harness for her and put her on the ground with an empty shell like that. <laughs> because as I've said in previous videos, she weighs only four pounds with none of her hardware. So I'm just curious to see how much difference her walking gates and such will respond with that much of a weight difference. Not that we could do anything about it. We can't very well shove all this into a remote control. Although, could we? Yeah, we won't think about that. Okay, everybody, have a great weekend, and like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.